Morning, gang. It's Saturday the 6th of uh, June 2015. A warm welcome along to this afternoon's United Kingdom talk. Well, we've got loads to talk about today. Absolutely loads to chat about today. Uh, if you saw the Periscope earlier on, we were, we were uh, discussing what to talk about today. Uh, first of all, first of all, boring jobs. OK, boring jobs. What boring jobs maybe that you have done or that you have seen other people do? Also in the show today, London has been voted the world's most popular holiday destination. Why would you want to come here? That's later on. And what was the other thing now? <laughs> I've lost it now. Oh, you think you're prepared and you're not, are you? What was the other thing? Oh, never mind. And I've got a cat story. Be afraid. If you've got a cat, be afraid. Be very afraid. OK, but I must just read you this out that Wendy has just sent in, boys and girls. You think you're afraid of cats? Well, how about this? Look, this is on today's Super Soraway Lester Mercury. Do you have got one of those? Lester Mercury. The Audi store in Leicester was shut after eggs, fearing to be from the evil world's deadliest spider have been found on someone's bananas. Now, I'm a great fan of bananas. You may be as well. But this is shocking, horrifying even. Look at this. An Audi supermarket in Leicestershire was closed today after a nest of eggs. Eggs. Feared to be the world's deadliest spider were discovered in a bunch of bananas. Banana. Manana. Banana. Manana. What's that other song about bananas? Oh. No, I'm thinking of the coconut song. I've got a lovely bunch of bananas. No, that's coconuts, isn't it? There's another banana song. Anyone remember? Here, do you remember the programme? Um, banana, banana Splits. I love banana splits. La 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 la. One banana, two banana, three banana, four. Do you remember that on the telly? And there was another program that I really liked. Can't remember what it was called. It was a load of kids, and they used to play on this old bus that was parked up in a yard somewhere. What was that called? Anyone remember? Do you remember what that was called? It was a British thing. The banana song, comedy song, yes. Hello, Shania. What, 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 was the so what was the show called? Wendy, you'd know this. Wendy is with us this afternoon in Leyland. Drive a British car with British... Le the Double Deckers. Thank you. Here we come. Here we go. Here we go on the Double Decker. I remember that as well. That was good. That was my favourite one. I preferred that to... The banana splits. La, la, la. That's five so Do you know, we've only been going five minutes, and I think I've sung five songs already for you today. How marvellous is that? Anyway, the story goes on. We, we, we digress. We digress. A family made the terror... This is in the Leicester Mercury. A family made... What's the, what's the readership of that, I wonder? Uh, the family made a terrifying discovery last night after they opened the bag of fruit and immediately called the police before fleeing their home. Now, we don't have pictures of that, I'm afraid, to show you. But I just want you to close your beady eyes. Close your eyes and just imagine a family fleeing their home due to a spider. They phoned the police. Yeah, they phoned the police. <laughs> I bet they were terrified. They were, as the uh, correct term is called, bricking it. Now, I'm not a fan of spiders. I'm really not. However, if it's a small one, it's in the hand, I can generally put my hand... Are you ready? Are you, are you ready to get shivers up your back? You ready? I can put my hand near the spider where the wall is, and let it crawl on my hand and put it outside. I can do that. But if they're too big, I'm sorry. <laughs> Up the hoover. That's it. Bye-bye, spider. And there's been a couple this year. Massive things on the wall. Where do they come from? 
You know, I didn't invite a spider into the house, did I? I don't think so. Um, the bag was feared, the bag of bananas was feared to contain the eggs of Brazilian wandering spider, also known as the banana spider, whose venom can kill a human in two hours. Who said that? Just a moment. Ian says, sometimes they don't die, always, if you get them up the hoover. Is that right? Have you got to leave the hoover on a, a certain amount of time? Oh, I don't muck about with them, dear. Once they've gone up the hoover, I'll leave it running for about another 30 seconds, and then I take the thing off the hoover and take it out to the bin. We can't have our spiders in the house, dear, not big ones. I don't mind small ones, but the small ones get big, especially if they've got a constant supply of food, like humans. If there's too many humans being eaten by the spiders, they just get bigger and bigger. It's true. Uh, wildlife experts searched the family home, but an adult spider was not found. I mean, how can you find a spider? Are these people off their heads? Have you ever tried to find a spider? I bet there's probably about ten spiders in my house now. Will I find a single one of them? Probably not. They are hiding, boys and girls. They are hiding. They're waiting for you to go to bed. They're waiting to crawl from the bottom of your bed where your little tippy toes stick out of that duvet. Up the duvet. Or blankets if you're old-fashioned. I miss blankets. Do you miss blankets? I miss blankets. Up the duvet where it will rest on your pillow and wait for you to move into the right position. As you breathe in and out. <sighs> and then you swallow one. Oh my God. I want you to, when you go to bed later on tonight, I want you to think about what I've just said. And search your bedroom for spiders before you go to sleep. It's waiting. It's watching. It will get you. <laughs> uh, they thought it was still in the supermarket. The store was closed. I think this was yesterday morning. Police officers and experts searched the aisles. How are you going to find us? Oh, God's sake. How can you can't do it? You've got to fumigate the whole place. Fumigate the whole place. That's what you've got to do. The eggs were collected by the Warwickshire Wildlife Sanctuary, who identified them and passed them back to Audi. Why would you pass them back? Squash them, dear. Squash them. Why and why would you pass Brazilian wandering spider eggs back to the very place that was trying to get rid of them? Squash them, dear. <laughs> Jeff Greenwick, who runs the Warwickshire Wildlife Sanctuary, reportedly told the Daily Mirror we had a call from the family who had bought the bananas from Audi and there was a clump. I say it again, a clump of eggs in there. Eggs. I like that word. Eggs. Uh, Shania's dipping in and out today as she's doing carnival feet. Oh, well, don't let us stop you. Don't let us stop you, Shania. We've been having a bit of a problem with your dad, to be honest, Shania. Yeah, he's, get, he's, been, he's get, been getting very angry recently and then trying to pass it off onto me, saying that I am angry. And as you know, I'm never angry, boys and girls. Never, ever angry. I would be angry if I found a spider in my bananas, though. Banana. Banana. We carry on. We had to determine what the eggs were and we thought there was a balance of probabilities. It was probably the eggs from one of those spiders. They can kill you. People who get bitten do die. <laughs> My advice, if you see one, just run away as fast as possible and call the police. <laughs> well, they did. But surely, if you, if you see the spider, you wouldn't run away with it, would you? Why would you run away from the spider? Because then, when you come back, you won't be able to find it anymore. If you can see the spider, squash the blooming thing, dear. Squash it. You've got to squash the spider. Hello. Just a moment. 
Hello, we've got a call coming in now. Uh, just turn off your um, media player. There you are, I've got you. Hello. I've got called. You got a cold? Yeah. Who's that? Well, Chris. Who who's that? It's Michael from Newcastle. Hello, Mike. Are you worried about this spider that we're talking about at the moment? Something about um it being in food or something? What 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 kind of food was it in? Sorry, dear. Have you not what? been paying attention to the show? I've just I've just literally tuned in now. Well, you've missed it. You've, we were talking about the Brazilian wandering spider. F so eggs that were found in someone's bananas from Audi, dear. Oh, oh, nasty, nasty stuff. Well, they run out of the house. And oh. I'm just saying, I was just saying, you know, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't you, if, would you run away from the spider or would you try to squash it? I mean, I'd try to Because if you run away from it and come back, then it can hide. Well, I'm scared of spiders naturally, so I oh. would squash it. Oh, I hate them. I hate oh, them. Well, this was too. apparently an Audi. Um, Audi? The, the bananas in question have been removed from the store and sent for expert analysis. <laughs> ah. hey, look at this. In 2005, a British man spent a week in hospital after he was bitten by one that had travelled to the country in a shipment of bananas. Well, I'm not eating any more bananas. I'm not buying any more. That's I it. Don't eat, I, I, yeah, I don't eat them anyway because I follow potassium. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, I can't have that, that much potassium. Is that salt that. potassium? It's it's bad for um like like diabetics and stuff. Yeah. Is 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 potassium salt? I don't know what it is. Oh, hang on a minute. Um, I think Simon's got angry again. Are you okay, Simon? Calm down. Calm down, Simon. <coughs> Must calm down. Did you did you see my periscope last night? No, I was at work last night, my friend. Were you on oh, periscope? Right. I did a periscope last night and I was getting loads of negative comments. <coughs> negative because, comments? Oh, right. Yeah. What you do is you click on the commenter and you click block and they're gone. Because um, I was talking to a homeless man. Right. And, um, you know, I was just I was just generally having a chat with him, you know, as you do when you're out, you know. Oh, um, you were out with your little little phone and doing interviews in the street? Yes, kind of, oh, yeah. OK, yeah. I haven't done that yet. OK, go on. And um, it was it was going... It was going really well and stuff, but I was getting loads of negative comments, which I wasn't reading anyway. Yeah. But um, I was just kind of, like, talking to him, you know, and I was getting, like, loads of negative feedback and stuff. And it was really awful, you know, because, like, I was trying to comfort the guy. Yes. And, um, what were they saying then? I don't know. Just, like, oh, um, things like leave him alone and, you know, get the camera out of his face and stuff like that. And I was like, well, <laughs> it's... it's it's periscope, it's what you do, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. Every, a, a few people I've heard have got negative comments. I, I don't really get any... I've had a couple, I suppose. But I, I don't... You, you see, with negative comments, you don't respond to them. It's no. OK if it's like a, 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 a conversation, you know, and yeah. you're saying, what do you think of this? And then that's mm -hmm. negative uh, towards your comment. But if it's negative, like a personal attack... Mm. Um, you know, then then that's one of those things. Uh, just just block them. Just just block them. Don't don't respond. A lot of these people want to be responded to. So either think... either ignore them and leave them there because after mm. all, it's another viewer. You know why are they watching you if they don't like it? Mm. You know. But right, do you think it was wrong that I um, chatted to a homeless guy using Periscope? I mean, no. actually putting the camera in his face. Do you think that was wrong? Did you ask him first? Um, no. <laughs> maybe you should have asked him first. Yes. Maybe but mind I you, I mean, I did I did a little periscope yesterday from Waitrose, and I just switched it on and started. Mm -hmm. And um, the Waitrose girls were there, you know, the workers, such nice mm -hmm. people and that. And uh, yeah. they didn't seem to be bothered. But probably, yeah, I would, um, I would uh, ask them first, you know. Yeah, it was just kind of like a spur of the moment thing, you know, and... Um, but he was really nice. He was called Leroy. He was a really, really nice guy. Right. I mean, he must about he, he must have been about in his sixties. Right. Okay. Terry you H. Know. Terry H. wants to know what why you thought. Um, what? Why did you want to talk to a homeless person on air? Why did I want? Because uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I, I really can't give an answer to that. Did you think it would make an interesting show? I think 
Well, by the amount of viewers that I got, which was about 21, 22 people... Oh, that's more than I ever get, dear. Um, <laughs> Mind I you, thought it's it was like... quite yeah. an interest Because I um, started out, I was just going around town, because I was going from one bar to another. Yeah. And um, I was just kind of walking around and just, like, showing people what um, the centre of town was like and stuff, and, you know, like, how how busy it can get and things like that. Okay. And everybody and was interested. And, that and, um, home, and I just that kind of bumped into him, you know, and he was just sitting there. And I felt so sorry for him, you know. I felt I felt awful, and I was wanting to give him some money, but I didn't have any money to give him. Right. Because and that, um, I and that homeless person was and that homeless person was was part of what was going on. Yeah, I understand mm -hmm. why you talk to him. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. have a problem with that at all. I think right. um, I think uh, if if you're talking about this sort of thing, um, little internet things or even proper TV programmes, anything like that, you know, you've got to talk to everyone in there. Now, um, to to get the message across, do you see what I mean? So, um, if you was to tell me, I'm going to... Uh, what's the country where they have all the, all those religious extreme... Uh, Syria. If you was oh, going yeah, to Syria, Syria yeah. and you was going to interview <clears throat> an ISIS person and broadcast that, well, that's what's going on there. That's what a, being a reporter would be all about. Uh, similarly, you could then the next day go to mm. the Catholic Church and interview the Pope. And then yeah. the next day you could go and interview a member of the Mafia. Yeah. You see what I mean? And the next and day, the day Chris, if, I think if he was still alive, the next day you would go and interview um, someone like Saddam Hussein if he was still alive. Because that is part of the whole picture and that is what a reporter does. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, you've got journalists who go around with cameras and things doing worse things than what I done last night. So I feel bad about it now, but I mean... Why are you feeling bad about it? Don't feel bad about it. You wanted to do a show, you did it. I think it. I've done it just to like, sort of raise awareness, you know? There you go. There you are. You've, you've just answered the question to mm. raise awareness. You did the right thing. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. I don't know. I don't. I don't see a problem with that at all. None right. at all. You know, well, when 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 when, uh, when they take cameras in to interview politicians, do they only interview the politicians that they agree with? No, they don't. They interview all of them. Exactly. So that's that's you know, you've just shown another aspect. It's all very well showing. Uh, are we talking about Newcastle here? Yes. Right. It's all very well going around with your little camera, showing all the big, posh, flashy bars with the people with a bit of money in it. Oh, yeah, this is Newcastle. No, it's not. No, it's not, because they've got <laughs> homeless people as well. And you've just shown that. Yeah. Where's the problem? I don't see any problem at all. You probably did a good show. Is it on replay? Yes, it is, yeah. All right, I'll try and watch it again on replay later, a bit, late, bit later then. Okay. I bet, I bet it's fine. I bet it's really fine. Did you well, say he was 60? I'll let you be the judge of that, but I thought it was all right. But, I mean, you know, as I said, I just didn't just to raise awareness, and that was... Did, that you was say, really... did you say he was 60? He was... He looked He looked in his 60s. Oh, right, OK. He's probably... Was he on the drink and the drugs, or what? No, he was just sitting there, just kind of like... Um, you know, he, he um, had some change by his side, and I said, look, I said, you've got some change on the floor there. I said, because, I mean, it was, it was like, literally coppers, like, fives and twos and things. Yeah. Um, which anybody would have given them. Mm. And I said, look, I said, you've got some money on the floor there. You know, do you want to pick it up and, and like, print your pocket and stuff? Because, you know, you could tell that you had absolutely nothing. Uh, and I mean nothing. He was, he was yeah. sitting there. He looked drained. He looked hungry. He was thin. You know, he just had this, like, this uh, little hat on. You know, he... he, he was probably cold, you know, you could tell he was like drained and things. But um I just done it just to like sort of raise awareness to people that well you know, it goes on in Newcastle as well as everywhere else in the country. Mm. I you mean know? I must admit to you Mike, I have I never give money to homeless people. Never ever. I have on occasions gone yeah. and uh in a in a shop nearby and a bag of crisps or a sandwich or something like that. I've done mm. that once to one and they just threw it back in my face. Really? We d I don't want that. I want money. Well, you know, I'm uh -huh. not so sure that... S ev I, in fact, I know that not everyone who's begging on the street 
mm. are homeless. Yeah. I know yes. that. Some of them are professional beggars. They, I mean, they really are. How do you tell the difference between the two? I don't know. Exactly. Terry um, H yeah. says it just, just puts it in perspective sometimes how lucky you are. I yeah. know, Mike, you're not, you're not um, someone with, you know, loads of money to spend willy-nilly on whatever. However, mm. you know, you're not living on the streets, are you? No, no. Have, have no. you ever lived on the streets? No. No, neither have I. I wonder no. what it's like. It must be the worst thing. Bad enough in the summer, but can you just imagine it in the winter? I know, it must be terrible for them. Absolutely yeah. terrible. Simon says, um, quite rightly, if you put yourself out there on the internet or whatever, radio, television, there will always be people who are going to knock you down. Always. I, I have it. I have it. I just ignore it and carry on from, with what I do. Really. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. I, you know, I, I've seen the comments firsthand of what you've had in the past on, you know, just by using Periscope and things like that and, that, and you know, going on the internet and doing these films and stuff. Yeah. And, people, and, people yeah, like. But people, people do hide behind a keyboard and a screen, and then when you when you eventually meet up with them, oh no, no, I didn't mean it, mate. No, no, and all this old crap. Yeah, yeah. Old rubbish. You just carry on, do what you do, Mike. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, Chris. Lovely to talk to you. All right. Okay, you too, Chris. Take care. Cheerio now. Bye-bye. Bye. Here Bye. we are, Mike uh, from Newcastle there. Isn't that funny? Uh, you see, we go on to other, other subjects that we had no intention of doing. Um, let's say hello to one of Wendy's friends. Uh, brand new a viewer to the show. Hello to Debbie, who is another Manilo girl. It's a miracle, beer, but a true, true spectacle. A miracle come true. And not only is Debbie with us, but nephew... Jimmy Butler is with us today. Yes, indeed. Ever get never give comments from someone face to face? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I get negative comments from people face to face who are usually drunk or think they know better than you. Um, it's funny you should bring that up, Terry. I was having this exact conversation the other day uh, with best friend Ron, who's uh, still recovering from his operation. And... Um, uh, sorry, I, I mustn't look at messages while I'm while I'm in full flow. I've lost the uh, lost the thread now. Where was we now? Oh dear, I really must not look at messages while I'm in full flow. That's gone, Jimmy. I said hello to say hello to nephew Jimmy Butler is with us today, and then we were talking about Ron. Negative com. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with her. Uh, negative comments. Um. Uh, and I, I found, I, I I brush them aside usually, or or deal with them there and then. You, and I, what I do is, I talk to people back in the same language they talk to me, which usually results in the reply, "Why are you so rude tonight?" Okay, an example, an example. Stand by for a swear word. Okay. There is your warning. A swear word is coming out because I'm going to give you a quote. And I told you this story a little while ago. Uh, around Halloween last year, I'm DJing at this place in Coventry. And this girl, uh, uh, we're just on 12 o'clock. And so we go into the Halloween set, so to speak. Just a few tracks that are related to Halloween. OK, so we'll be talking... Ghostbusters, Monster Mash, and then Thriller came on. Now, Thriller is the big one, OK? So you, you, you lead up to it, and Thriller would be the big one, and indeed the last one of that particular section. So Thriller's on. About halfway through the road, this girl comes up to the side, because you can't actually... You can get to me, but there's like a, a chain, so you can't get into the DJ box. The reason for that is that we don't want drinks going all over the place and what have you, Yeah. Um, as a DJ, I, I'm very, very careful with drinks. So if I, if I, if I had a drink with me now, it'd be a cup of tea, and it would go over there, away from the mixer and the computer, or behind me. So if it goes over, it will go, hello Dino, it will go on the carpet and nowhere else. Damaged carpet, equipment, all okay. All right? And she's, oi mate, oi mate, oi, oi mate, like that. And yes, indeed, they do... Talk to you like they talk to you like that. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah. 
What is all this shit? I'm sorry? What's this shit? I said, it's Thriller, Hall Michael Jackson. Well, I don't like it, it's shit. Well, it's Halloween. And? Yeah, it's Halloween songs. Well, it's shit. I said, OK, do you not like it then? She said, no, I don't like it. Put something else on. OK, then, bye-bye. And then she said to me, why are you so rude? Do you see what I mean? Now, I get that a lot. They are rude, rude to the extreme. And I put up with it and I stand out and, and then eventually I'm like, OK, bye-bye. That's how I deal with that. Bye-bye. Why are you so rude, she says. That is, that is a prime good example of what we have to put up with. Really rude, ignorant people. The fact that it was Halloween. It works, doesn't it? Now, remember, we are talking to one person here, probably out of about 350. But actually, that is enough to totally destroy your night in your mind. Everyone else is dancing and it can throw you off. It can throw you off, especially if you're a younger DJ. You don't perhaps um, you've only maybe just started out and you don't know how to handle these complete and utter idiots. Right. Now, one thing, and I discussed this with Ron yesterday, one thing I've noticed in the last, oh, what would we say, six months, six to nine months, six to nine months, maybe a year, one thing I've noticed with myself in that time um, is that I am becoming less tolerant of people, idiots, some customers, some managers, generally people, things on the telly. And I, I, I'm becoming much less tolerant of people, of, of, of people. No one who's with us on the show today, certainly. And... I'm not sure why this is. Is it something with age? Wendy thinks it might be something to do with my age. I really am becoming much less tolerant of idiots. Now, we all like to have a joke, don't we? But sometimes people go on and on and on. And, and what I do first, if, if I'm starting to get fed up with something, I will try and turn the joke round on... Um, on, on the person. I'll, I'll try and turn it round. OK. Uh, Rusty says, what do you do if they become violent? Well, they never do. They don't. What you've got to do is talk to them and talk to them sternly. But I, I certainly, whereas I would have waved it, I'm becoming much less tolerant of people. I walk around the supermarket sometimes with Ron somewhere and I, I look up, you know, I look, you know, what are they doing over there? Or there might be some people shouting loudly or speaking loudly or and I get on my nerves. A lot of television is, 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 is really getting on my nerves now as well. It is a difficult job, Terry, but, but don't you take phone calls from customers? You must get this as well on the phone, do you? Uh, I have become, in the last year, I would say, much less tolerant of people. Is it my age? I don't know. Wendy thinks it is. Are, are you the same, Wendy? Have we got many people sort of over the age of 50, perhaps, um, joining in with the show today who have noticed themselves speaking honestly about themselves who are becoming less tolerant Terry says he gets escalated complaints uh, they're even worse on the phone oh I know they're worse on the phone I used to work for British Telecom didn't I I used to take those calls my phone's been out of order for two weeks when are you sending someone round that is exactly it I do not suffer fools easily I really don't. Um, someone says here, Blythe says, as we get older, we just realise how much time we are wasting on them. I'm 45 and don't suffer them either. I really don't. I, I just walk away or completely dismiss them. Hello, Blythe. Where are, whereabouts are you, my darling? I'm not quite sure who you are. Is that like a just a nickname on there? Really don't. I, I walk away or, I don't know, do you get pokes? That really winds me up. Like, like that? Excuse me, mate. Excuse me, mate. Yes, I do. 
Or, you know, if you've got headphones on, I've got a set of headphones here, where are they? Right, so if I'm mixing, that's, that's like a DJ term, okay? When it, if you're mixing like that, and you're trying to listen to records, and someone's talking to you, I'll like, be with you in a minute, and they do that! Oh, hello, Chris. I know you, Chris. They do that. They pull your earphone off your ear in order to get their comment into your ear while you're bloody working. They, they have absolutely no... Um, they won't wait. No patience whatsoever. Absolutely no patience whatsoever. Chris, 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 tugging at your clothes. Go away. <laughs> Go, leave me alone. There is no manners. Terry says it's rude. People are full of self-importance. They are. <laughs> you know, the job I do isn't important. I am not an important person. I'm not. It's just a bit of fun, the, jo the jobs that I do. And I'm very lucky to be doing it. Even throw that tugging and poking and all that. It's, it's, it's much better than some of the jobs that I've seen on the television, which brings us nicely, nicely to this subject. Oh, Wendy, I don't think entertaining people is important. They, they, can, they, they, can, um, they can entertain themselves, can't they? So what do I do for entertainment? Well, I, I've started to do other things. I mean... Not next Wednesday, the Wednesday after, I'm going to my first opera. Uh, I think it's Ace of Spades, Tchaikovsky, something like Ace of Spades. I'm going to an opera. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do, go to an opera. Now, a little while ago, a few months ago, I went to um, see the Master Singers of Nuremberg, which is like an opera, but not quite, apparently. And I enjoyed that. Great. So we're going to another opera in a couple of weeks. I go to the cinema quite a bit. I've really got into the gardening this year. Flowers all over the place. And it's deadly going to that bloody garden centre with me. Yesterday I went to Sainsbury's home base. Oh, it's not, it's home base. I went to home base yesterday. Here is a good example of one of my trips to go. I, I will go to a normal garden centre or home base. They're, they're the two that I tend to go to, right? And Ronnie loves garden centres as well. Uh, we, we can spend a couple of hours in a garden centre going around. We love it. <laughs> Jimmy Butler says you'll be going to bingo and chess soon. Yeah, do you like bingo, Jimmy? Five, I used to do bingo. Do you remember that? I used to do bingo. Five and eight, 58. Seven and nine, 79. I'd like one of those machines with all the balls in it. <laughs> do you know they're a £1,000 to buy new? You can get second-hand ones sometimes, very rarely, but they're about £1,000 to buy new, those. Yes, indeed. Now, where was I? Oh, I've lost the place again. I've lost it. See, I must not. I've, I've got to keep talking and not looking at your messages there because it just throws me off completely. Where was we going before the before the bingo and the chess? Oh, yes. Thank you. Opera, opera, cinema, garden centres. And um, what we've started doing now is is seeking out garden centres that we haven't been to yet and going around there because they're all different. That's the wonderful thing about going. It's not like going into McDonald's. Right. You go into McDonald's anywhere in the world and it's all the same. God, it's boring. You go into Kentucky Fried Chicken anywhere in the world, it's all the same. All the same. But you go to a garden centre, every single one is different. I've gone to garden centres in other countries where, you, you know, it's pointless going in there because you can't bring anything back. You're not allowed to bring anything back to the garden centre. But I just love walking around in them. I love seeing the plants. Thinking, oh, I'd love to get one of those back home. But you're not allowed to. Very legal. Very legal. Churches. You haven't got to be religious. All churches are different. Modern, old, cathedrals, churches, chapels. Every church you go into is different. Jimmy, that's where we made the mistake. When we were in America, in Florida, we should have gone and visited churches as well as Disney, Disney I reckon. My little nephew would have enjoyed that. He's 18. He was 17 at the time. I think he was. It would have enjoyed going round to say churches. <laughs> um, there we are. There's Deborah. Hello, Deborah. You're there now, aren't you, my darling? Deborah's back with us now, I think. OK, Deborah, one of our lovely Manilow girls. 
Um, hello, Tommy. Tommy says, loving your talk on spiders reminds me of when I found dead spiders in a tin of Cod Row when I was a kid. Oh, no, how can you eat that stuff? Cod Row. Oh, no. Hello, Deborah. Where are you, Deborah? Are you in the US of A? In which case, why are you up so early? Hang on a minute. What time is it there now? Oh, it depends where you are, doesn't it? I suppose you could be if you're in New York. <laughs> um... Dino wants to know, what's the programme that people send you live messages? Periscope. That's right, Periscope. Are you near Boston? Oh, you're near my sister. She lives in Woodall Spa. Do you know Woodall Spa? That's where my sister lives. Yes, indeed. Um, the programme that people send live messages, yes, indeed, it's Periscope, uh, Dino. OK. Oh, Boston in the USA. I beg your pardon. Boston in the USA. Hello. So what time is it there? About... Half past six in the morning in Boston. Yeah. Periscope, you want uh, Dino. And my username on there is Chris Reardon UK. It's on the iPhone and Android as well. All right. Um, what's the show's number? Oh, I haven't given the phone number. I haven't even put the phone number up. Blimey. We've only got 20 minutes left. Never mind. Matthew, if you're around, you can call in 020 8144 Three four double seven, okay. O two o eight one double four three four double seven. Feel free to call in, young Matt. It would be nice to hear from you. Yes, indeed. And uh, Scott says, "Are you down running mead next Saturday by any chance? Is it near you?" No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh, I, th I think that was a private message rather than a radio message. Sorry, I'm letting my private life interfere with our program today. I do apologise. Now, how about this one? Boring jobs. Bore oh, is there anything anyone wants to ask me before we carry on? Quickly. Shall I leave a gap here in case you want to say something? What do you do, Deborah? I'm dying to know what jobs you do. We're just going to do a little. We're just going to do a little bit about boring jobs in a minute because I've been watching this program on the on the television called The Job Centre. Has anyone seen that? God's sake! I mean, I'm sorry. The, the, uh, it's like, oh, you're a pharmacist. Oh, that must be quite interesting, is it? A pharmacist. We've got a call coming in here. Now, that looks like it's... That would be my sister. Hello, Sharon. Chris Reardon. Oh, it's my, it's my nephew, Jimmy Butler. Hello. Chris How marvellous. How marvellous. <laughs> this is the first time you've called in to this internationally acclaimed, award-winning... Trans World Universe throughout Outer Space Voyage Voyages 1 and 2 broadcast. Hello, oh, Jimmy. Cool. Chris Reardon. Well, you're in from work early, aren't you? Yeah, I started early, so I got to finish early. What time did you start? Half seven. Oh, that's not too bad, is it? No, no. So what time do you have to get up to go to work? I'll get up at seven if I start half seven. It only Stay takes a half hour to get... Don't you? Do you have breakfast? Yeah, breakfast, quick shower and an hour. What do you have for breakfast? Cheerios. Cheerios? Yes. Oh, for God's sake. They're just covered in sugar, Jimmy. You must have porridge. Don't you like porridge? Oh, no. Why not? Too much time in the morning. What's happening with it? the dogs? They're attacking. They're yeah, attacking. Is there a squirrel? Hey? Is there a squirrel outside? <laughs> no, it's mum. Mum has <laughs> just got that. <laughs> That's not a th nice thing to say about your mum being a dog. <laughs> Was it her barking? <laughs> Can I just tell you, Jimmy's mum is my sister. Okay. So what do you do for a job, Jim? Tell us, tell us all. Uh, car body repair, repair cars and painting. Right. How long have you been doing that? Two years now. When you went in there, were you like an apprentice? Yeah, I still am an apprentice, aren't I? It's my last year this year. Right, okay. Now, you're up north. Um, what is it like finding jobs for young people you uh, think about perhaps all your friends yeah. have they all got jobs now yeah they've all got jobs yeah two or three are in trade like electrician yeah and builder so and the rest are like shop workers you know jim we see people on the telly who live up yeah. your way and they say we can't find a job up there right you're 18 what do you say to that look harder Look harder. Did, 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 was it hard to find the job you wanted? No, no, the first one I went to. They said, yeah, straight away. The very first place... Well, that's luck, though, isn't it? Surely that's luck. Well, it was the same with Nadia as well, the, the electrician. Nadia's your best friend, yeah? Yeah. He's and, an electrician? Uh, my mate. 
right? Field off, first place he went to. And was it generally like that for most of your friends? Uh, yeah, I think so. They've all got jobs, and since they left school, so I should say so. OK. Now, of course, when I say up north, there's plenty of... I mean, the north is a big place. You can't generalise it, can you? No. You can't actually generalise it in, in saying um, that... N you know, there are plenty of jobs up north. But where you are, sort of Lincoln, Boston area, you would say there's no problem at all getting a job if you want one? No, I don't think so, no. That's amazing. When you went in there, were you started... Did, like, you went in there, say, I don't know, what day, on a Saturday? When yeah. did When did they want you to start? Uh, the week after. Wow. So not, not the Monday, the following Monday. As quickly as that? Yeah. Was it was it a job that you wanted to do? Did, did it come into your head, right, I'd like to do that, and then you, or, or did you just think, oh, I must get something? Not first off, but now I've started, I enjoy it. You love it? Yeah. And where do you see yourself in five years' time if you can't... Um, sorry, no, I'll ask that again. Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Will you still be there? No, uh, my own shop, hopefully. Your but own place? Yeah. You have to be careful what you say on here in case any of them are watching or listening. <laughs> Viewers all over the world. I mean, yeah, I, course, you know, five some, million. sometimes, you know, I, I might, I'll probably walk into the place I work tonight and as I walk through, I'll hear people talking about the show that was on earlier and talking they don't recognise me. me. Isn't that amazing? Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so you'd like your own place. Now, um, would you like that up there or somewhere no. else? No, I'd like it further south. You'd like it in the south? Yeah. Why? Uh, more cars, more money, I think. Like you... Up here, it's a lot of restorations. OK. Are you... And I think down further south, you get more modern cars, didn't you? Not as enthusiastic about this, restorations. Is it the money or the cars that you're, 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 you're wanting to... The cars. The car, you want to work on other cars. What sort of cars do you want to work at? Uh, just modern ones, really. We what get a lot of old, rest, like I say, restorations in. Modern as in sort of my car or yeah. Ronnie's car? Yeah. OK. Why? What, what's the difference in working on an old car or a modern one? Uh, a lot more things can go wrong on the older cars. What, body-wise? Yeah. Like a lot of rust and welding and... I see. That sort of things. So what, what, would, what would be the difference in repairing, say, I had a dent in my car, yeah. or you had a dent in Grandad's car, you know, Grandad Jerry. Yeah. Did, did you know my dad? Uh, no. No, OK. So, say, it, OK, sorry. That's, we'll call it my Mini. Call it, yeah, your Mini, because that's a, that's a really old car. How old is that? 1979. 79? Right, yeah. so if you've got a dent in that, or you've got a, mo a dent in my car, what's the difference? Uh, well, if it's a replacement panel dent, because you'll have to get the panel if it's an old, old car, or if it's just a small dent, it'll be that there could be old filler in the older panel, which means reshaping the new filler. Oh, right, so, so, so an old car might yeah. have already been filled a few times, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and it could have been filled... Mm. bad so rough can bubble up the new filler but don't you like working on because your car is known as a classic car would you perhaps like to work at one of the classic car places because they're up they're, you'd be talking about old cars there my god uh, 40, 50, 60 years old wouldn't you yeah yeah we get that's, we get a lot of, we've got one in pre-war car in a minute wow at work well I, I was driving into London the other day and yeah. um I was stuck in a bit of traffic, and coming the other way, stuck the other side, was this beautiful gr racing green Rolls Royce, um, really old, yeah. you know, no roof on it, and this bloke's sitting there, he's got the flat cap on, and I just looked over, and he looked over at me, I said, oh, that is so nice, and he's like, thanks very much, and tipped his hat and carried on. <laughs> <laughs> and what a lovely car. Probably does about three miles a gallon or something like that, doesn't it? <laughs> so how are you going to find a place down here? Where will you live? Do I need to empty out my room, my other, my spare room for you? I think, I think you better start, yeah. Do you want a telly on the wall, anything like that? Uh, yeah, if you're offering, yeah. 
But, Jim, what time will you be getting up for work in the morning? Oh, God. Don't know. Will I have to get up and do breakfast? Of course. I, I expect <laughs> breakfast in bed. <laughs> that's what I get now, so that's what I should be getting when I come to you. <laughs> Does your mum and dad know you you got these plans? No, I don't think so. No, I better not tell them, because you'll only start crying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, every night. no, actually, if you do tell her, can you periscope that for us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so evil. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you, all right? Thank you. Taking my call. Chris See you, Green. Jim. Bye-bye. London. Ah, lovely. Jimmy Butler on the fact. It's the first time he's ever called in, my nephew, Jimmy Butler. I'm really pleased about that. We've got another one coming in here. Hello, Ronnie. Good morning. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> oh, how marvellous. This is Ronnie. This is best friend Ronnie, who's really ill at the moment, aren't you? I'm very ill, yes. Oh, uh, yes. Wendy, Wendy's just sending a few. Any messages you want to send in, send them now and I'll read them out. Uh, Wendy says, what a lovely young man. Let me tell you, that boy is so nice. He's he is, such yes. A he's, nice a very, person. He's, he's, he's grown up to be such a nice young lad. He d- Not like out drinking and doing drugs and or anything like that. Went straight out to work. No, no problems, like the other two, like Gary and Tracy, just the same. He don't, he nice, don't, well he don't, brought up children. He don't and ring in sick or anything. If he's got headache or something, he don't, he don't ring in sick or anything like that. He's in there. No. He's on yeah. time all the time. He's actually very well thought of in that. It's only a small business, just a few people in there, but he is actually very well thought of in, in, uh, in, in that, uh, in that little business up there, you know, Ron? Yeah. Yeah. So he should be. Yeah. He's a very nice kid. Anyway, what's, very, how very are you? Nice what have you got to tell us today, dear? Oh, I'm just beginning to say, you know, that because uh, that your comment earlier about, you know, me dying a little bit more, I thought it might have offended some people and they might have called in, you know. No, we, we didn't do it on the show. You know, not everyone who watches the show is a Facebook friend, so they won't know what you're talking about now. Oh, so right, explain, okay. please. Oh, OK. No, well, not to no. worry. Eh? Sorry? Not to worry. Right. But um, is that a new jacket you've got on? No, no, this is the old one. Oh, the new okay. one hasn't come yet. Oh, that's what I meant to tell you, boys and girls. I, I don't know if any of you are into fashion, but there is a Ralph Lauren uh, sale on on Thursday. Okay, Lauren. it starts Thursday, uh, but oh, I haven't got the code. Have you, I don't. Have you got the code? Yeah, I we think can tell people this. Can, can I'll you find it? Can you bring have you spoke about holiday destinations yet? Can you bring it up yet? No, we haven't done that yet. Oh, that's Holiday strange. destinations, yes, indeed. I've been everywhere. Holiday destinations. London, okay, London has been reported or named as the world's most popular travel destination. Have that, eh? Yeah, have uh, that, me, yes. That, you've missed out a little bit. What have I missed out? You've missed out that in seven years we've been voted that five times. Oh, have we really? Yes, Where's that bit? Is this in the Daily Mail, is it? Uh, no, I saw that on the news yesterday. Right. And here's somewhere you've been. Thai capital Bangkok is the world's second most visited city with an estimated 18.24 million viewers. This, uh, uh, sorry, I was thinking about the viewers to this show then. Did you hear that? <laughs> uh, million vis- you wish. Pardon? Million visitors this year. God, yeah, you've been there, there, haven't you? They do get a lot there. I've been there, yes. What did you think of it there? Very busy, very noisy, very smelly. Right. Um, very, it was full, very full on, very, very full on, bit I, crazy. I would hate it, wouldn't I? You would, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if yeah, you were... Would the, hate it. Yeah. Uh, right, would you like that code? Pardon? Oh, yeah, the code, the code. Right, it's um, R for Romeo, L for Lima, M for Mother, yeah. S for Sugar, E for Echo, S for Sugar, A for Alpha, L for Lima, E for Echo. Uh, no, I lost it there. Can you just read oh. the bloody letters without all the stupid words? That's called... Um, just give me the letters, dear. Now. The letters, the letters. R-L-M... S-E-S-A-L-E. Right. OK. And all in capitals. So, if you're into fashion, boys and girls... <laughs> <laughs> Debbie's laughing at <laughs> Debbie's laughing at that. If you're into fashion at all, as you can see, I am with my very fashionable bright yellow shirt and blue jacket on today. Yeah, well, we need to speak about that as well. Sorry, what? Need to speak about what? The, 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 the two colours clash. What? Yellow and blue. Yeah. We need we need colours like this. You've got to have a bit of colour in your life. The yeah, phonetic alphabet that is. Yeah. 
You need coloured in your life. Look at your walls in your living room. I mean, grey. Yes. God, I mean, grey. Yeah, there, splash, there is splashes of colour. What what's splash? What, the cats painted on no. the wall at the back? No, there's the orchids. There's the p- uh, pink orchids. Oh, yeah, you bought... There's the red in the picture. You bought orchids. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. on the sofa. Excuse me, new viewer, Debbie says, I look smashing. Thank you very much, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Mm. I look smashing today. Um, does, she, does she work at Does she work at Burton? <laughs> <laughs> this is a Burton jacket. All right. So, <laughs> if you're into fashion, Ralph Lauren have a sale starting on Thursday. But we have a code. If you want to do shopping online, we have a code that will give you up to fifty percent off. And I actually ordered some stuff yesterday. Um, and I've saved a small fortune. I, I, I generally, I quite like the Ralph Lauren stuff, but I, I, the, the full price of this stuff is really expensive. I mean, really expensive, OK? Um, but there was a jacket that I wanted. You may remember me talking about it. And, and Jimmy Butler actually saw this when, when we took him to Harrods a few uh, couple of months ago now. for his, Well, about, was it a couple of months ago? A couple of months ago for his birthday. And it was a lovely jacket in there. But it was, it was I, I, I wanted it, but it was too, I thought it was too dear. Anyway, believe it or not, it's in the sale. I've ordered it. I've ordered that and three T-shirts and saved a small fortune. Um, you don't know how much you're going to save until you get... To the or what's Check it called? Out. To the checkout at the end, okay. And then you'll see uh, apply code here, and you type in R L M S E S A L E. Hit enter, and then it will come up every item, and it it's worked on everything I've put in actually. Every item will have money off. Uh, an example would be a T-shirt that was eighty-five quid is now fifty quid, and things like that. All right. So oh, 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 I will tell you actually. How much do you remember? How much that jacket was? Five hundred and twenty in Harrods. Okay, well the four ja- nine five at Ralph Lauren. The jacket in Harrods was five hundred and twenty quid. In Ralph Lauren, it was four hundred and ninety five. Okay, it's on the Ralph Lauren sh- sh- uh, uh, site. I think full price three hundred and ninety five now. Yeah. Okay, I've got it for a bit over two hundred. All right, so huge savings to be made there at the Ralph the Ren sale if you're interested, boys and girls. Thank you. Sorry? Mm, I do right, like Ralph Lauren. Hol- I have lots de- of Ralph Lauren stuff. Holiday destinations. Dubai. Dubai. Tell us about Dubai. Oh, Dubai's amazing. Every time we go there, something's different. Yeah. We've been up the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. Um, the skyline is amazing. The, even the airport's amazing. It's one of the biggest biggest terminals in, in the world. And it's becoming one of the busiest as well. Their numbers grow by millions each year. And it's just a fantastic destination. There is quite a lot to do. I mean, the shopping malls are absolutely huge. Um, it is a very, very nice place, very nice place to go. People go on about, you know, it's a strict Muslim country. It's not. It's very, um, it's very cosmopolitan. If you respect their laws, then they respect you. You know, if you, you know, you have to be modest. But, you know, you can still sunbathe and things like that, you know, that, you know, and they, they, you know, they say about, you know, the, the, the fanatics, you don't get those there. What do you mean about, mod- what do you mean modest? You, you'd have to modest, have, have a T-shirt. You don't, you can't walk around, yeah, you can't walk around in, in your speedos and flip-flops like you do in, in Skegness, Benidorm. Skegness. You know, oh, have you seen them? Awful. Oh, God. Awful and you get this, those great big fat people, a little bit like myself, you know, walking around with no tops on. Aren't yeah, they just awful? Well, you, you, got, you can't really do that in Dubai. You can with, do that in the hotels. With, and they've got, they got a bag of hotel. chips in one hand and an ice cream in the other hand, haven't the they? Other. Yeah, uh, it's uh, awful. Question but from Dubai a very question, nice. very, question, nice. question from a viewer. Uh, Dubai, is it hot? Yes, um, it can be. There's certain times of the year where it's like 45 degrees. Um, but there is times of the year when it's a lovely 26, you know, 25, 26. Everywhere is air conditioned, even the bus stops, because we, we don't use buses ourselves. But we came out of the hotel and it was really, really hot. We went into this bus shelter and it was air conditioned. Uh, an air conditioned, air conditioned bus, shelter. bus shelter? Yes. Oh, wow. So okay. everywhere is air conditioned. You walk along around the harbours and they have like a mist of, of cold air, of water. But it's like air. You don't get wet. It just cools you down as you walk past certain places. Do you very, think, very nice. Is it a place for young people? Do you think Jimmy Butler would like to buy? Jimmy Butler would love to buy the shopping right, give, there. Okay, say the you went there malls. for seven days. Give me seven days worth of things to do. 
Okay, you could. Well, first of all, obviously there's 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 shopping. That's two. That's that's two days. The, is the shopping, the shopping are is the shopping huge. cheap like it is in America? Okay, some of them are yes, but some of them aren't. No, I mean, you can go to Dubai and spend. Um, we bought we bought diamonds and and jewelry out there, oh. and we spent a couple of thousand pounds. Um, we bought clothes, but cheaper than here. You know, in places like Fred Perry, Lacoste, you know, yes. it's, it can be cheaper. Um, but you can go to Prada and spend £30,000 on a handbag. Oh. You know, it's, it's, it's a very, very wealthy nation. Very wealthy. You see lots of very, very expensive cars there. Beautiful cars. Beautiful Mercedes, L- LSS, plenty, lots of Rolls Royces. Right, so shopping uh, is one thing Porsche. to do. What, what else can I, what could I do there? What else could I do there? Okay, you can do, um, you can do paragliding in the, um, in, uh, along the sea. Just um, there's yeah. numerous hotels where you can have, where you go for eateries. Yeah. Um, the food there is a, the food there is spectacular. In the hotels, it's it's second to none. You know, the everything is presented so well, and the food is gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Um, you can do um, diving, you can do paragliding, you can do diving out of aeroplanes in the in the um, along the coast. There's, there is just you know you can go desert desert dunning. You can go desert driving. You know, you drive out of Dubai for like 40 minutes and you're in the Sahara and it's amazing. Absolutely wow. amazing. You know, wildlife trips, you can go what wildlife, camel riding. What wildlife is there to see there? Uh, in the desert, well, there's obviously there's camels and there's, you, you've, you've got all the, um, the, the desert wildlife. There's a zoo there as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing things, place. What things do they have in the zoo? Is it like, or are they in cages though? Oh, no, they have massive enclosures. Massive, massive right. enclosures. Massive. Can you ride on camels? Can you go for rides on camels? You can ride on... You can go into the desert and, and, and meet the nomad people. But, you know, wander around and you see... Sorry, you, hang you, on. You, the, you, you, the what? Nomads. What are they? They're, they're, they're people from tribes. And they're okay. very, very friendly. Very, very friendly indeed. If you're travelling through the Sahara, they're, apparently they're very, very friendly. If they set up camp and you're there... You know, you, they ask you to join them. You know, you know, they, they, they're very, very, very friendly people, but they're very modest. You know, you know, you know, it's their, it's their culture. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the, the rules that they do in this because I believe in this country we should be a little bit more harder about the way that we deal with things. Um, maybe not so strict as in Saudi Arabia, but you so know, that's that's a trip, to, a trip to the desert. Go on, give me some more things to do in in, in Dubai. Oh, so you've got trip shopping, trip to the desert. Well, that's two days, um, yes. What else? Golf. You can play golf there. Golf. There's an amazing golf course. Um, you can go horse riding. You can go along the beach. Um, all the hotels have, a lot of the hotels have private beaches where they do volleyball. You can play sport there. There's, there's loads of things to do I there. see. I very, saw very one busy. hotel and it's got this like everlasting swimming pool. What looks like it's going over the edge. Yes. That's, have you that's, been in one of those? Called, I have. That's, that's called an infinity pool. Infinity pool. Okay. Yes, an infinity pool, and it normally faces the ocean, yeah. and it just it just la- it looks like the ocean reaches at the end of the pool. It's very nice. Wow, wow. Go yeah, on, carry on. Other things, other things. Oh, other they, things. they've got um, they've got that tallest building. Yeah, thing the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. Is it? Up, someone wants to amazing. know. Someone wants to know. Do they speak English commonly there? Uh, very much so. Very, very much so. It's a second language. Right, okay. they, speak, but they probably speak more English than Arabic, to mm. be honest with you, because most of, a lot of Dubai has been schooled in England. Remember, Dubai, places like Dubai, Qatar, Yemen, that you know, a lot of their, a lot of the, the wealthy people right. are educated in this country. That's why they drive on the same side as us. So you stay in the five star hotels, don't you? We do, well, five or six, yeah. Five or there's, six. Um, there Tell is, me, there's a seven star hotel there called um, called the Sal. The um, uh, the Burj Al Arab, right. which is the South, which is a seven star hotel. The last place we stayed was um, the Zab al Saray, which was six star, which was right. absolutely right. spectacular. Is there, absolutely um, spectacular. I, I just imagine there to be sand everywhere. Is that a stupid no, thing to not say? Not at all, not whatsoever. It's so clean there. There's no graffiti, it's clean, it's safe. Um, there's not a massive police presence, right? Um, everybody is very respectful. You know, you can walk through the, the malls and you see millionaires, billionaires, you know, Arabs. You know, and then you'll see Russian prostitutes, you know, but they're very respectful of each other. They don't, they just don't interact. Right, they just, okay. You know, it, it's, it, it's very, it's very well, it's very well bred there, you know, right. the way that it is. You know, obviously, if you flat the laws, having sex on the beach, 
you know, you, you expect it. Well, you wouldn't do that anyway, though, would you? You wouldn't do that anywhere. But you wouldn't do that. That's right. You know, well, not unless you go, some then. common oath that normally goes yeah. to, you know, fitness or more, Christ something like that. You know, you, you just, you, just be respectful. That's all you need to be is respectful. Right, I see. I love Dubai and I love, I, I love the, 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 the Arab Emirates. It's, it's a fantastic place to, 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 to visit. And it's full of culture and full of history. 50 years ago, Dubai was just a fishing port. Right. That's all it was. And in the past 50 years... They don't, they don't, have, old, they don't of, have old buildings or anything like that there, though. They do. do they? they do have a lot. Oh, they, they do? They do have old Dubai. Yes, you can visit old Dubai. You can visit the Sooks, which is like a market, so you can buy anything from rugs to spices to everything. You know, it's, mm. it's amazing. Well, you, you, you're selling that to me a bit, to be honest. Yeah, and I mean, Emirates, to fly Emirates as well, um, their business class is, is one of the best in the world. How Absolutely much is one that? one of the best in the world. Um, well, it depends. It depends on the time of year you go and when you book. You know, it, it's a great destination to stop over. If you're going to, say, the Far East or Australia, Dubai would be a good place to stop for three days. I'm with you, yeah. yeah. To, break my, trip, to break up a trip. My cousin is in Abu, Abu Dhabi. Dhabi. Yeah. And he keeps telling me, next time I go, to stop there for three days. Yeah, and, it breaks it, and, of course, it breaks it up as well, doesn't it? Breaks it yeah, up. Abu Dhabi is the next Dubai. That's what they right. say. Okay. They've got the Ferrari racetrack there. You know, it's way under, well, very well around the yeah. construction as well. Mm. So, all right, but, then. Well, thanks little, for um, calling in and talking about Dubai today. Thank you. Been a pleasure. Cheerio. Cheerio. There we are. We've got a couple of places there um, uh, to chat about, um, but London, of course. London, of course, is the top favourite destination in the world. Aren't you pleased to hear that? Anyone else want to call in quickly now? Let's try. I think Rick wanted to call in, actually. Rick in um, America, quite possibly. Let's just see if I can call him back now. Uh, I did see a couple of you calling in then while we were on the call, uh, but we can't do multiple calls at the same time, you see. Uh, no, I, can't, I don't think we can get hold of Rick at the moment. Anyone else want to join in nice and quickly now? Because we're going to disappear in a minute. If you want to call in, call in now. Here is your last chance. Any other messages? Send them through now and I'll answer those uh, before we disappear. Um, other places to visit that are popular. Paris, 16 million view visitors. Dubai is fourth, as Ronnie was just saying. It's very popular. Very, very popular, Dubai. Istanbul, Turkey, of course. Turkey, Turkey. I was watching a, a guy uh, on Periscope last night from Turkey. I couldn't understand what he was saying, but he looked good. <laughs> Hello, Rick. How are you? Hello, mate. And Anyone you are where, please? Hold on a second here. Oh, you're going to... All right. You turn I'm here off. now. Can Hello, you hear Rick. me? You're in the USA. What part? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, USA. Nice to talk to you, sir. It's been a while. Yes, it has. Tell us about your favourite holiday destination, Rick. It's... It's the Outer Banks of North Carolina. North Carolina, okay. That's that's not somewhere I would, um, uh, or, or, or indeed I'd heard of anyone ever really visiting. Tell us about it. Well, um, it's a chain of barrier islands about, oh, I don't know, maybe 15, 20, even maybe up to 50 miles from the uh, mainland of North Carolina. Yeah. And um, it's been rated as one of the best beaches in the world. Is it popular with your um, uh, with the Americans? Is it? Do I oh yes. Right. Okay. Um, the the one problem about it is it's right in the, it, it has been known to be hit by hurricanes a lot. All right. Okay. <laughs> but um, you know, you go early enough in the season, like right around this time of the year, the waters. Yes. Perfect. Everything's within walking distance. So if you've got a house on the beach, you could walk to five or six different restaurants that are along along the boardwalk there. Would you class it as a quiet holiday? It is. So it's somewhere to relax and just maybe go for walks and things like that. We're not talking theme parks or no, no. mad There's... boat rides or anything like that. Well, you know, there is, you know, obviously there's fishing there, but also they have um the Wright Brothers Memorial, the right if you remember the Wright Brothers are the, the ones yeah. that have the first actual power flight. Airplanes, yes, yes. And they actually have the they have a replica of the original plane and you can they will give tours about it and everything. Oh that sounds lovely. That sounds like a peaceful holiday. I don't know if um 
you know, Rick, uh, I went to Maine once on a holiday. I'm going back here some years. I was 16 at the time with the Scouts. Was uh, it called? Oh, someone here says, my sister's going to Outer Banks in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, sounds like you're going to have a nice time there. Uh, yes, Maine. You know the uh, the state of Maine, and that's just <clears throat> beautiful. We went on a 50-mile canoeing and walking holiday i'm sure we did more than 50 miles but it was just stunning out there you know completely unspoilt i saw no buildings for 10 days not wow. a single piece of concrete just beautiful trees and water the places that you camp. We had a guide with us. He had to have a gun with him because there were apparently brown bears. I mean, we never saw one, oh, to yeah. be honest. Apparently, they keep away from people, brown bears. Is that right? Yeah, well, I know the black bears around here do. Yeah. Um, but one other interesting note about the Outer Banks, in the town of Ocracoke, which is a separate island which you can take a ferry to, Yeah. and we did this on our honeymoon. We actually took a day trip down there. Um, there's There was... During World War II, there was a bit of a collision, I believe, between a British submarine and a German U-boat. And right. the British sailors who washed ashore were, are buried on Ocracoke Island. Gosh, no, I don't know that. Don't know that, Rick. Uh, someone just wants to know, was it on um, the something river in Maine? I don't know exactly in Maine where it was. It was a, it was a, it was a, an adventure. Let me see if I can find it on the internet for you. Sorry, someone's asking me something. A, it's okay. Adventure Centre, Maine. And it was something to do with the Scouts. Where the, what, Scout Activity Centres. Oh, why is that? Oh, hang on. I've, Maine, USA. Okay. USA. Here we go. Maine. That, that's it. That's the place. I remember that. It's called... Oh, it's a good, good website. MaineHighAdventure.org. That's... I'm sure that's where we went. Um, don't see any pictures. More info, maybe. Let's have a look. Any pictures? Yeah, that's it. That's absolutely it. Have a look at that. If you want to look at that, boys and girls, mainhighadventure.org. I went there. It's amazing. It's just totally... And there, there's pictures of people in canoes. And they're those open canoes, Rick. You know the open ones, like Indians? Oh, yeah. It, they, they were those type. Oh, what a time. At the time, I don't think I... I don't think uh, at the time I enjoyed it that much. But now, I'd love to go and do it again, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, absolute pleasure to talk to you, Rick. It's right, been mate. too long, my friend. Call in again soon. Will do. Bye-bye, Rick. There we are, Rick there. And uh, that's that's it. We're out of time, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Don't forget, we do have a little Periscope shows that I do several times a day now. Uh, download the app Periscope, and the username is Chris Reardon UK. If you'd like to send in an email at all, I'd love to hear from you. OK, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Have a lovely Saturday afternoon. See you soon. Bye-bye now.